Now, students at the University of Oxford have demanded that the feminist academic Kathleen Stock be no platform from its debating society after she was accused of transphobia. The former philosophy lecturer, of course, was famously hounded out of the University of Sussex in October 2021 after being targeted by activists who disagreed with her views on gender identity. Oxford's LGBTQ plus society made the demand after Dr Stock was invited to speak at their union next month. Student activists said they were dismayed and appalled by the decision to invite her, accusing the union of allowing her to stoke fear against trans people. But Kathleen Stock hit back at the LGBTQ plus society, calling its statement utterly ridiculous and probably defamatory. Should people like this be no platform? Let's speak to Frida Wallace, host of the Gender Nebulous podcast. Frida is a trans woman. And Stephanie Davis Ari, who is a founder and director of Transgender Trend. Good afternoon to you both. Uh, Frida, first of all, um, you're always interesting on social media. Your podcast does very well. I have you down as somebody who's a supporter of freedom of speech. So mm -hmm. what's wrong with Dr Stock pitching up over there at Oxford? And we just lost Frida at that moment. Let's go to Stephanie in the meantime. Um, Stephanie, not the first time we've seen people no platformed in this respect. Give us your response to this latest one. We're a bit tired of it, aren't we? I thought the, the um, time of no debate was over. Uh, we're, we're getting really tired of hearing people called transphobic. Kathleen Stock is one of the most measured and um, protective of all people's rights and expresses that, you know, out of people that I know in this uh, debate. So to no platform Kathleen Stock is really unbelievable now. I think, you know, students should get over this. Students should be able to listen to somebody with a different opinion to them, mm. um, which is all this is, uh, different beliefs, different opinions, and maybe learn something and be there and argue with her. If you disagree with her, argue with her. That's what being a student is about. But it seems that if any woman in particular, men as well, but mostly women, um, have views that a woman is an adult human female and that if members of the male sex are called women, then will that causes certain issues for women you know and affects women's rights then that's not an acceptable opinion and those women are bigots and transphobes mm. and it's that, a difference of opinion and that's where we're at uh, we have frida back with us i mean that is the, the, the yes. root i suppose frida of, uh, of of the problem here isn't it is you know if you if you can't have a difference of opinion at a, in a university debating society mm -hmm. you know it's where you know life is all about some uncomfortable realities or uncomfortable yeah. opinions even if we disagree with them yeah i i don't i don't want kathleen stock to be deep platform but what i'm interested in we're talking about her now but she's not here is she she's not here she hasn't come to this debate with with us and kathleen is stock is not somebody that is deep platform she's very well publicized she has a she's got a she released a book called material girls that was very well publicized which basically is eight chapters that details an argument about trans inclusion it's not it's not anything else and i've i've looked into this quite in detail and what i would say to kathleen stock is you know you like just today just today on talk radio i've i've counted the word trans mentioned 12 times it's only two o'clock so i can come on here as a trans person but we're very 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 rarely represented whereas kathleen stock you could google her and she's she's been on nearly every popular tv program and podcast she's not silenced in any way well, shape, she, or but she, she's not in the sense you're right she's written a book but that's not necessarily what this means for you is it in this respect those at the, the society in oxford have asked for her to be deplatformed but she was never deplatformed. She, she, you said in the beginning of this that trans activists hounded her out of her job. That didn't happen. She chose to leave because other academics wrote to the university, over 500 of them in actual fact, and said, we don't actually think there's any value in what Kathleen Stock is saying here. Now, she didn't have to leave that That's job. That's a kind of 500 people are asking for your scalp. That's a hounding, right? Well, yeah, but they weren't trans activists. They were other peers. Uh, in in philosophy, Kathleen Stock didn't write about trans or gender before this. 
you know she was uh she was an academic philosopher who wrote about film and and cultural ideas she wasn't uh, a person that was she didn't train in any kind of gender studies. I, and i don't think she was claiming to either for that matter no but why would she be so why would it be uh, appropriate for her to speak on that but Stephanie, just to, to bring up onto that point, I mean, there, there is no doubt that Dr Stock was given a hard time, regardless of where it came from, it, what a hard time it was. I, I think Frida makes the point for all female academics here, actually, because if you have a view that gender identity makes you a woman and you believe in, in gender identity ideology, then this doesn't happen to you. Uh, there's no case where a woman... What? Who, who has those beliefs is rounded out of the university. What happened to Kathleen Stock is happening to women throughout academia. If you, uh, women who dared not speak out to say that they believe that women are human females and that those rights based on that should be protected. And that is not an anti-trans view. That is a view that is protecting the existing rights of women. And it's just certain existing rights and protections that are very, very important for women and trying to have the debate and have the discussion so that we can work out a way um, to uh, balance everybody's rights, which is what we should be doing in a democratic society that what? believes in the freedom of speech and particularly in academia. Frida. Well, this is not a freedom of speech issue. This, we know Kathleen Stark, and when, I know you as a, a, a campaigner have been platformed by some very powerful lobby groups. You're talking about the IEA. You know, these are not these are people that are coming out of Tufton Street. We're not they're not like street level activists. We are, as a group, trans people only speaking from the street. We don't have the backing of of uh, the back rooms of Westminster. Do you know what I mean? And and, and with respect to you. Um, the things that you're standing for is actually conversion therapy. You believe that trans ideology is is causing children to be harmed when it isn't. All children want to do is to be listened to. And if and if a child said to, to a teacher, oh, I might be trans or I might be gay or I might be exploring ideas of gender, the worst thing you can do to that child is say, you're wrong. Because when you do that, they go to someone else for advice and you can never guarantee the person they're going to is going to have their best interests at heart. Stephanie, now, is, that, I, is that a fair point, Stephanie? I yourself? have never, ever said that and I do not support conversion therapy. But you said gender and ideology and gender ideology doesn't exist. I'm saying, I'm questioning the idea that when a mm. child believes that they're the opposite sex, that mm -hmm. we should say that they're right we should support children absolutely there are lots well, of well that's ways not the impression i get from what i've read about you sorry well, about what that what you but... read about me will be saying that i'm a transphobic bigot well if because you that's what if, it, anybody if it's you that's talks, written it if it's you that's anybody, actually written it <laughs> anybody who talks reasonably on these issues if they don't fully support uh, the well, idea of gender I, identity, mm. it's called a Nazi or a bigot or a transphobe. I'm used now, to it. There's I, quite I, a lot of that, no, Frida, no, isn't there, no, online? I, I see a I, lot of a lot of people atta to attacking... Go. I'm not suggesting you do, Frida, I know you don't, but I am seeing people who, uh, who, who, who bat for the same opinion mm. as you do, mm. that, that it takes yeah. nothing to gravitate and play the Godwin's law card and up it comes, Hitler, Eva mm -hmm. Braun, you know, those kind of names get thrown well, around very casually because I somebody has got... a different view. And women have been phys physically attacked, I mean, you know, just for hold holding these views. And uh, getting back to this is an issue of academic freedom. And if the... Uh, and getting back to Kathleen Stock, she is a philosopher. And if we cannot have a philosophical discussion about we, what, it is, what it means to be a woman in the university, then we're lost. We must be able to yes. have those debates and discuss them. I absolutely adults. agree with that. I absolutely and agree with, with that. With respect and I, for each other. And, I, you know, to, to see this happening yet again, um, you know, I throw up my hands in despair at the state of students today who cannot hear... An argument well, that goes if against I could just, what they if believe. If I could just respond to that, go for it. I want, I want to have that debate. I would love for Kathleen Stock to have been here today because I've read her book, 
and I've gone through it with a fine tooth comb. I would love to put every single point in that book to her and have a reasonable debate about what that means. But why, but why do the Oxford LGBTQ plus society not want her there, though, Frida? That's because disturbing. There are, because they're an Oxford LGBTQ TQ society and they know the history and they know the things that Kathleen Stuck has said in public and they disagree with them. Well, that's any... the point, isn't it? Well, so they disagree with her, so they don't want her to turn up because they disagree no, with her. But that's no, but she's not. But, but that is that is a political... That's deplatforming. That's no, it's not. No, no. They, they may want to deplatform her from that particular conversation, yeah. but she's not deplatformed anywhere else. But that's not the point here. Nobody's suggesting she's eradicated from life, but she no, is uh, think, clearly struggling word... in certain places to have her voice heard yeah, because people yeah, want to when, cancel her. Yeah, when you use words like eradicated, I would never use a word like that. I've, I ha I've watched endless hours on YouTube of Kathleen Stark talking to other academics. There's no shortage of Kathleen Stark talking. There are hundreds of hours of Kathleen Stark talking, right? She doesn't need... That, it's not about that, is it? It's about students here not wanting yeah. to hear Kathleen Stark talk but at imagine, their university. Imagine if you were a trans student at Oxford University and somebody told you that one of the most overfunded and prominent anti-trans activists was coming to your university, you'd want to make a stand against that. It's as simple as that. It doesn't you go mean to the debate not... then. You go to the debate and yeah, you make your but, points known, don't but you? But you've got to you've got to understand that the balance of power is not in the trans people's it's not a, favor. It's not a balance of power, is it? I mean it's it not is. really it... when people are losing their jobs because no, they no, don't that, hold Ian, a certain view. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to have that because nobody has ever lost a job for having a certain view. What they've lost jobs for is bullying people in the workplace. Well, when people I write something... I guarantee that there would be female students and probably male students as well who would love to go along and see Kathleen Stock speak. Yeah, and sure, I would. Students, I would. I... These will be students themselves who have not <laughs> dared to say mm. that they support Kathleen Stock's views because yes. they also will be tarred with the same brush that she that they will be called that, transphobic and mm. that is that's the balance but of power that is the is... reality of the balance of power that nobody mm. who's speaking for the your side of the debate is afraid to speak out it's no, only the, no, the people that's completely upside women down who i'm dare afraid not speak out on this issue look no, at the research no. that laura Favreau did now she's taking City University in a legal challenge at the moment because her research into attitudes towards this issue in universities, which was a very, very interesting report, was um, was effectively banned. <laughs> yeah, and and mm. you know you don't get that on your side. That does not happen. So the message always is we cannot talk about our side if you like our side's point you, of view you, your side is the dominant side of the culture we live in a misogynistic very uh, patriarchal culture and this is and, and this is why people like kathleen stock are, are promoted you, by the patri IR. patriarchal that's an interesting are you, yeah. are you calling me misogynistic and patriarchal yes i am yeah because you, you the, 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 i'm a the, woman they, i'm no, but you can you can still be a woman and misogynistic. Anyone can be misogynistic. What well, the point I'm making is that the point that we are fighting from is not the point of power. The, if this was a seesaw, you'd be up here and I'd be down there. No, but that's is that not just a, a, a way that you've redefined the terms of the debate, Frida? That you've looked at no. it on a, a power issue in order to advance. You know, perhaps you're sensing maybe well, you've lost the dressing room on some of these points. Well, okay. The, the new way around no. defining it is to talk about power. No, because if I if you if you think about it this way, think about media power. Uh, how many uh, in the Daily Mail and the Express and the Times and the Guardian? How many positive articles do you see about trans people? I think they're more interested in talking about the arguments that. But ensue. how do they frame? How do they frame those debates? Well, it depends on which story you're reading, I guess. So if all the stories are about trans rapist, trans prisoner, trans... But they are stories terrorist. in themselves, aren't they? They are stories that yeah, but, do... do but, you know, if, if a prisoner but, suddenly, if a bloke suddenly says halfway through a court case, I'm a mm. woman, then I think that does mm. a couple of things. Firstly, so, so, we don't believe yeah. him. And mm. secondly, you know, it makes people question what is going mm. on in this gender ideology world of ours. You know, nobody okay. has uh, debated mm. trans issues for... Mm -hmm. I've done this job for 20-odd years, never even discussed it, never came up, nothing mm. remarkable, 
blah, blah, blah. No one even mm. considered anything. You know, when, when Nadia won Big Brother, that, that point was hardly <laughs> even mentioned. Um, so, and yet here we are today with daily, daily stories that haven't come because of transphobes. They've come because we've got too many blokes with beards and penises suddenly jumping up saying, I'm a woman. Do you think that's a realistic uh, notion? Yes. I, I think what the press is doing now, and it's taken a long time because for years there weren't any stories at all about the real issues that, like, the press didn't dare go into this mm. area. I agree and now with that. we are seeing a more balanced coverage, but it's by no means, um, it's, it's not, not balanced. Anti trans. Okay, can it's, I just. It, it, it's more balanced than it used to be. Just very briefly, because we are be. we are short of time. Can I just ask Frida, Kathleen? We did ask Kathleen Stock to come on the programme. She wasn't available. If there was one question you would put to her, Frida, what would it be? Well, I'd like to ask Kathleen Stock why, if this is a free speech argument for her, why she shies away from coming on this programme. Or, I mean, I know she's been in the media quite a lot, okay. but. If you're going to have this debate, you have to have it with trans people. And, I'm, right. and, um, and, the, and I've been on talk TV a few times now, and I'm starting to think, am I only, the only trans person that is going to make that move? You know, because, I, I, I mean, I don't know what it is, but I mean, maybe I'm just gobby and I don't care too much about being seen on TV. No, no, but we spoke to India Willoughby like, a couple of weeks back uh, on, on yeah, a similar point. But, was, you know, but my point is, that are very few, because trans people are generally very shy, and when they see all this kind of stuff going on in the media, they become kind of traumatised by it. I get that. And you've got, to, you've got to understand that there are real people at the heart of this debate. It's not about oh, that... a philosophical question. It's about real people's human lives. All right, Frida, thank you. <laughs> on that point, Frida Wallace, host of the Gender Nebulous podcast, uh, who's a trans woman. Uh, Stephanie, I do apologise. We weren't able to get a final comment in there. Stephanie Davis, RI, who's the founder and director of Transgender Trend.